All right, everybody, welcome to my kitchen. It's your boy, Chuck's Flavor Train. You have made it to the flavor station. Today, we got something real special on the menu. This right here, called a beef hump. You know what I'm talking about? That back of the neck header comes from a Brahmin style bull, Brahmin cow. But this is the hump on the back of the neck, a real special cut of beef. Saw Pitmaster X do it. I've seen Google do it. Now your boy, the head honcho's getting after it too. Let's go. All right, so for prep, it's pretty simple. Uh, this piece right here doesn't need much outside of just removing some of the hard fat. Other than that, and if you wanted to leave it on, I'm sure you could, but we want our seasoning to make contact with the meat. So that's where we're gonna take off some of that hard fat. And I would like to apologize any background noise. It is Saturday, cartoon day for my daughter. So if you didn't know, you know. Real quick, I wanna highlight, just got it out of the package, but the marbling on this cut is insane. Look at that, looking like some Wagyu or something. You know what I'm talking about? Insanity. So this is gonna be tasty as shit. I mentioned the fat. The other thing, it's gonna have part of the spine bone. That's some of the spinal bone right there. So, or, or the neck, I don't know. I don't study this stuff, I just like to eat it. But we're gonna take that off along with the hard fat, so. Little bit of meat, but as you can see, fat, bone, so. All that hard fat, this stuff right here, that's real hard, is not gonna render off or cook down. And you see just how much fat, I'm going little by little because I don't want to cut into the meat. So I'm gonna take off layer, a little layer, until I start to see or feel that I'm where it's supposed to be, so. Save your fat, by the way, render it down, use it for tallow, you can add it to smoke briskets, you can sear and saute things in it. Oh, just an FYI, so. Again, hard fat, beautifully marbled meat underneath. All right, so here we have it. Marbled, luscious, fatty, and beautiful, just like yours truly, if you know what I'm talking about. This thing bout to be magical. Let's get this seasoned up. For a binder, I'm using this W sauce. It's American made Worcestershire sauce and it's damn delicious. So we're gonna use this just to add a little bit extra flavor. Bring some more umami if you know what I'm talking about. A little bit of that, you don't need too much. Rub that, smear that in as Harris Sue would say. Give it a little smear. A little smear on this side as well. And that's it. Now it's time to bring some flavor and do it major. All right, here's my pinky poppin' umami rub. Again, we want this beef to be salty, umami, fatty, goodness, you know what I'm talking about. Pop your pinky, pour it up, make sure that it's covered and, sorry, sticks together, all natural. No clumping, yeah, right? All right, make sure that it's covered and smothered. Flavor should be packing. And any extra seasoning on the board, rub that bad boy into it. We're good to go. So we've got our beef hump on here, going low and slow on the Weber kettle. Got the snake method, so the charcoal's gonna burn from this side all the way around. Hopefully give us a nice even cook. I'll turn the beef as needed, may spritz, whatever. Stay tuned, keep you posted on this cook, but this is gonna be busting for real. Notice that the heat's on that side. Vents on this side. Why? You wanna draw the smoke across. So as you can see here, getting some nice color, good bark. We're still early in our charcoal, so we're moving along just fine here. I'm spritz it, help it stay moist. Help that crust form and bark build up. And this is gonna be good to eat, folks. Vent opposite of charcoal. Three hours later. Can you move it along? I'm all out of time cards. All right, so we're three hours in on the cook. Apologies for the background noise. It's nap time for my daughter. She's not happy. Um, if you'll notice the smoke right here. Really hard to see the smoke. Um, that's what you want. And you shouldn't have big clouds billowing out here. We're three and a half hours in. Let's take a look at the meat. See if it's looking sexy like Lexi. Ooh, doggy. Starting to bark up like a big dog. And as you can see here, the heat was on this side. This side is darker than the side where the heat was not. So as the heat moves along over here, we're gonna go ahead, 
I'm just gonna flip this roast here. Sorry, I should be using barbecue gloves or something. There we go. So bring this away from the heat a little, like that. So further distance, but facing the heat, this side should bark up nicely. Once this whole thing is barked up, we're gonna try to get this probably wrapped up in the next 35, 45 minutes, but I don't think much longer, especially with how dark this part has gotten. So stay tuned, I'm gonna be wrapping this soon. But uh, we're three and a half hours in now. This will probably be our last spritz before we get it wrapped up. But when they talk about bark being set, if I touch it like that, none of the seasoning comes off. So that's what you're looking for, so. Like I said, we're real close, and as you can see, the snake method's working good. We're about three and a half hours in, and we're about halfway through. So this should be good for about a seven or eight hour burn, so it just depends on the cook, so. But this thing looking sexy like Lexi, barking like a big dog. We'll get this off soon. All right, so three and a half hours in on this, or shit, five and a half hours, sorry. Not really keeping track of time out here. But as you can see... It's looking like a moon rock or a meteorite. So this thing, root, 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 barked up big dog status. So close up shot just so you can see, but this thing's got a tremendous bark. Again, charcoal's burning along nicely. So as you can see here, it's all set. Nothing's coming off when I touch it on my gloves. When I scrape it, nothing's being removed. Wrap this bitch up, let's go. So we're gonna wrap it with foil. Everyone wraps different. Some people use butcher paper, you could use foil. Do whatever you like and works for you. The key when wrapping, to wrap it tightly. So whether you use foil or butcher paper, wrap it tightly to prevent the steaming from happening. You want it to kind of braise and get tender, but you don't want it to steam. So stay hydrated as you cook, by the way. Normally I recommend heavy duty foil. I don't got the heavy duty, I got regular foil right now. So we're gonna go with a double layer. So double layer, regular foil. All right, let's talk about wrapping. Some people wrap apple juice, uh, beef stock, water, Worcestershire sauce, red wine, uh, little red wine, combination of all the above. We're gonna wrap today Baron Burton's W sauce. This is American made Worcestershire sauce. This stuff is crazy delicious. I'm gonna add some more umami. We use that as a binder. We're adding it back, really good flavor. So we're gonna use that and some beer. I got some Lagunitas, uh, what is this, Contents Under Fresher. It's a fresh, a lighter beer. It's freshly hopped. So I don't want to use anything that's going to change the flavor of the meat too much. We're trying to, we don't want to change anything in the sense of what the meat's supposed to taste like. So keep it basic. Anything that you would drink, use it. If you wouldn't drink it, don't cook with it. That's facts. Enough to help the meat kind of steam as it cooks. So, and don't waste your beer. Don't be a bastard. If you got leftover beer, drink that shit. That's how it goes down, baby. All right, wrap it up tightly. We're gonna do one more layer of foil just to make sure all the moisture stays inside. All the juice that comes off of this, save that. Drippings are life, baby. Come back, we don't cook by temperature or time, we cook by feel. So when this shit feels like butter, that's when we're done. Stay tuned, I'll catch you up on that soon. Remember, the vent always goes away from your heat source. All right, so I just pulled this off the Weber. Um, I tempt it a little later than I wanted to, and by tempt it, I mean poked it. I'm not worried about the temperature. I don't cook by temp, I cook by feel. But by the time I went out there and actually poked this thing, and it only been 45 minutes since I wrapped it up. It's at 210. So that's high. And it's okay to overcook some things. Some things are more forgiving. I've actually never, this is the second time I've cooked this cut. I've never overcooked it. So I think it'll be okay because the fat content is so high, but we're gonna find out together. But I don't really like to have a thermometer or probe in my stuff when I'm cooking backyard style. Competition, cooking, catering for clients, absolutely. But I'm really trying to play around with this cut, learn how it is. There's no temperature on the Weber kettle. So people got to worry, what temp did you smoke at? I don't know what temperature that was at. I know how it looked. I know that I was burning clean smoke. And I know that I had to adjust or rotate the piece of beef maybe two times. So it wasn't overly hot. I'm holding my hand over it. If I was guessing, I would say we were probably smoking at 275. Cooking at 275 isn't necessarily a hot and fast cook, but on the Weber kettle, anything you do essentially where you're smoking is gonna be considered a hotter cook in my opinion. Why do I say that? 
because there's not a lot of distance between where your heat source is and where your meat's sitting. Our heat source is at most maybe eight inches away from our meat and there's no buffer between that. So even though it's 275, it's a direct 275 versus an indirect 275 where you've got a firebox or a bigger smoker and your heat's coming from one side of the chamber and then it's traveling a further distance. So just my thoughts. Long story short, I should have pulled it sooner if I was paying attention, but the way it felt and based on the cut, I think we're good. So we're gonna let this rest. To let it rest, I've got it right here. So we're gonna open this up, okay? I just pulled it off, I did that little spiel, but we're gonna open this up now, let it rest open for probably 10 minutes or so to cool off, to stop the cooking process, and then I'll get it in my oven on warm, just to rest till we're ready to eat. So it actually doesn't look dried out, if you can see that. Looks pretty damn good, actually. And like I said, it's a real fatty piece of beef. I think we're gonna be fine, but we'll find out together, but yeah. That thing should be tender. I actually think that it's not gonna be overcooked. I think it'll be good enough to cut. So stay tuned, folks. About to do some butter cutting, baby. Here we are at the end of the day. It's about 6.15, ready to serve this up. Talking quietly, my wife's resting, my daughter's watching cartoons. Apologies on the background noise. Anyway, what we're here for, this beautiful beef hump. Got our reserve drippings here. Total cook time, got it on at, I wanna say, 11. Pulled it off at five? Yeah, so uh, six hour cook time on the Weber kettle. Uh, I don't really keep track of things as I'm going. I'm just kind of in the moment, probing, checking, seeing how things feel, what they look like, whatever. Anyway, this beautiful barked up meteorite, this thing looks like a piece of coal or a moon rock. I don't know if that's picking up on camera, but I mean the juices are dripping off this bad boy and it's tender, I can tell you that right now. So we're gonna cut it open. Last time I made one of these, it's on my TikTok, check it out. Chuck's Flavor Train on all platforms. By the way, if you're into this, like and subscribe. That's what the kids say anyway. Um, long story short, last time I did one of these, I actually sliced half, shredded the rest. I preferred it sliced personally. Either way, it's delicious, but hopefully this is slicing. Hopefully I didn't overcook it and ruin it. Let's find out. Let's see if it's really butter, baby. doesn't make you happy, you don't like barbecue. Sliced it up, my daughter's here, she's very excited. She's already tried it, was it good? Yeah, she liked it. So I'm gonna go ahead and try the piece here. What? Again, beautiful bark, 
Nice little smoke ring on there. We got these dippings right here, and you ain't living if you ain't dipping. Pop that pinky, savor the flavors. Little dip. Eat it. Eat it, Dada. <laughs> this is no joke. I said it before, I'll say it again, better than brisket. I cut it with the grain, not that I'm worried from the cutting the smaller pieces as we eat it, but regardless of how you cut this, whatever you do when you serve it up, this is better than brisket. It's like eating fatty brisket. That's a fact in my opinion. So, gorgeous pieces, smoke ring, bark, tender juicy meat. You can see all the moisture within. B-Pump, check it out. My family and I are gonna enjoy. I appreciate you tuning in. I'll try to this. I appreciate you tuning in. I will try to do this more. As always, thank you for watching. Bang, bang, flatter. <laughs> I did say blue. Do <laughs> you want to try a piece of meat? Yeah. Here you go. You want to try that? And this one. Are you going to dip it? Start them young. Is that yummy? <laughs> That's happiness, folks. B-roll. I'm out.